So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back, ladies and gents, to another one of those Silent Night in Pieces. This is a sub-series of the podcast Under the Stairs, where we take the movie Silent Night from 2012. We split up into five-minute reviewable segments. I get podcasters from all over the world to sit down and review those five minutes with me. The added level of fuckery diced on top of this one is, of course, that I mix up the order of the release. So they are non-linear. So this might be the first one you're listening to. Maybe the last one could be somewhere in between. On this episode, we're covering minutes 10 through 15. This one will start with a mother and daughter in a house having an argument over a bottle of pills and it will end with our protagonist deputy sitting down at our desk with a newspaper in hand. Joining me on this episode is my very good buddy and long, 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 long time collaborator. We're talking OG way back in the day, over 10 years, going strong, Mr. Gary Hill. How's it going? Just making a guy feel real old, that's all. <laughs> if you're old, I'm ancient, right? So <laughs> let's, let's behave. <laughs> that is what it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm doing really, really well. Um, we were just talking off here. You, d- you did land a couple of very fun segments that I'm looking forward to chatting about. Uh, I suppose we'll get to this. It's one that I ask on all of these ones. You'd seen this movie before, right? Oh yeah, I seen when it came out, and you know, it's this this remake. That's not really a remake, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it was it's good then. It's good now, you know. Great it's entertaining. And stuff. You know, I mean, that's yeah. the thing about it. Regardless what you think about the script or character development or anything, it is. I mean, it's got as it puts his money in the right place. The the deaths in this one are really fun um, and surprisingly practical. And then on top of that as well, you get the, you know, a little bit of um, just like primo performances by Malcolm McDowell in this, which to me are like like a high watermark, but like obviously are arrested, um, but innocent Santa or a reverend. So those three characters to me are almost worth the price of admission because they're they're surprisingly fun performances against the backdrop of. Um, <laughs> some pretty bad dialogue and <laughs> some pretty terrible characters and uh, you land you land a couple of like absolute classics here and one with a character that if if you were going to give child death to someone on the list of podcasters that are doing this series I would always wish that it goes to you especially this time of year <laughs> Gary loves him for some good child death man you know, that's all that is <laughs> <laughs> um, no, gonna... I, I just, I just love that you know a film would have the balls to like, especially in this scene, 
you know, to graphically murder a child, yeah. especially this early in the film. You know. Yeah, like three seconds with this kid though, and I wanted to murder this child. So, um, <laughs> like, this movie gave me what I wanted. Um, and let's get to it. So the this scene opens with a mother and a daughter in a house, and the mother is trying to open her pills. Um, she manages to finally open them. She gets a couple in her hand, and then this obnoxious little brat girl comes in and knocks them out of her hand. She says, "What are you doing, honey? Honey, <laughs> those are mummy's heart pills. I need those." Um, and the brat's like, "You need to take me to the mail," um, which is a terrible. Uh, I'm, listen, I'm a 42-year-old Scottish man. It's difficult for me to channel my inner 11-year-old valley girl teen. Um, but she's like, you need to take me to the mall. And she's like, but I thought we'd go to church tonight. And he's like, fuck church. I want my new LV today. I don't know what an LV is. So... I, some kind of MP3 <laughs> Zoom player or something? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> we have the wrong people for this. <laughs> She's like, well, why don't you wait until tomorrow and see what Santa brings you? And she's like, do I look like I believe in Santa Claus? Go get your purse and meet me in the car. So she goes off. Like, I, I'll tell you right now, that wouldn't happen in a Scottish household. <laughs> like, the mum gets up and goes to get her purse. And as she's walking, she walks past a door and sees a Santa Claus, kind of looming large. And she's like, great, salvation fucking army. And she opens the door, and it's her Santa killer. Um, she says, got something for me? He reaches into his sack, pulls out a cattle prod, um, and she says, I didn't ask for that. And then what happens to this snotty little girl, Gary? What happens to her? Well, she, she stands there like, like the asshole she is. <laughs> it, it, yes, it's okay to child that call an 11-year-old an asshole, but this child, let's analyze this scene real fast, okay? And, and think in 1987 terms. This child who's, who's, whose mother's hand was shaking so bad that mm. she, either she's so annoyed by this child or she really needs these heart pills this bad. Yeah. S- smack, gets her, her pills smacked out of her hand. Yep. And then this child says this thing and then she's like, well, let's go to the mall. And mom's like, okay. Not not in an Irish high household either. Okay. <laughs> we would get whooped like we were in Kmart in, in the seventh, in the, in the, fifth, the fourth grade. Okay. You know? <laughs> Man, oh man! No, the next thing that happens is is and it's wonderful because I, I love child death. Apparently, uh, uh, Santa h- h- hits her with with the cattle prod and yep. he just holds it until she's form at the mouth. And just to put um, some more icing on this brat's cake, yep. uh, stabs her with some kind of skewer or something. It's like a poker. Like, yeah. It's like a fire poker. It like, it like... It's, it's something, man. Oh yeah, she gets it right in the gut. Um, and this kid is dead now. <laughs> Bro, she, we barely knew her, but I get the feeling that we'd seen enough of her. Um, she's she's gone, she's gone, and um, we then transition quickly. The assumption is here that I think the mother dies as well. I think it's said later on that maybe she died, but we obviously don't see that. We instead jump to our deputy who at this point in the movie is just doing anything not to get into work. Like, she got told you don't have to be in to work till three, and you're covering this Deputy Jordan shift, and we have had the most protracted, like, that she's done a crossword that she didn't finish, she's fucked around with her dad, she's spoken to the mayor, like, we're getting everything, and she goes to church. And uh, as she's sitting in her pew, she's startled by a character that is called Reverend Maidley, but I call him... <laughs> Rev Perv, um, because he is he like creepy, creepy, <laughs> like everything about him just like screams like date rapist, um, and he he puts her hand on her shoulder and she's, and she's oh Revlin Maidley, and he's like, do you remember the old days, Full House, every Christmas Eve, Easter too, nothing's the same anymore, not even the snow. And she kind of looks at him as if to say, well, you know, there are other things. Like, you're crying about this empty church. Well, I'm here because I want to remember John, who we find nothing about in this movie. This movie does a spectacular job of giving you no details about this character, John, that apparently she was in love with. Um, But she's like, yeah, well, we've all lost a lot this last year. The Reverend says, John was important to the community. It's always hard when a loved one leaves. 
no matter what the circumstances. But I want you to remember, Jesus loves you, Aubrey. He's always here for you. And so am I. If there's anything I can do to ease your pain, anything at all. And at this point, he gets a little bit handsy on the deputy's shoulder. She's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. That bold move by the Reverend. But he like is leering at her. This is like this is two steps away from being a John a John Voight leer in Anaconda, if you know what I mean. It's just creepy. <laughs> he's he's just in the accent though. Yeah. <laughs> if if we had the accent, I I can't even do the accents, I don't even try, you know. So like Share yeah. on the river. <laughs> Sometimes the river is very lonely. And he just digs his hand in her shoulder, you know. Do you think, like, at what point during the filming of Anaconda do you think the director was like, I fucked up with casting John Voight? <laughs> See, you got to talk about method actors, and you know what? I think he, he, he had, had something in mind, and he just went for it. Yep. I, I think that's that's it, man. You know, because it, it it is at the end of the day the, the best part of that movie. Oh god, yeah. Oh, oh god, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Um, so um, she she kind of looks at me. She says, "I'm going to be late." She leaves in a hurry, and then we see her finally arriving at the police station. Brenda, the receptionist, is reading the magazine as a deputy comes in, yawning, and Brenda says, "Do you want me to pour you a coffee?" She says, "No, it's okay." I've got it. What are you reading? She says, a survey. It says that Christmas makes people crazy. Do you think it's the short days? And the deputy says, or maybe it's the jingle bells a hundred times before breakfast. Where is everyone anyway? Brenda says, the sheriff's out scouting the parade route for suspicious packages. And the deputy says, where's Giles? And she says, late as always. Did you hear about Jordan disappearing? He flew the coop. And the deputy says, yes, that's why I'm in here today. I mean... He couldn't have waited until after Christmas, and she says, a rumour is there's a girl and they're eloping till Milwaukee. And the deputy says, okay, of course they are. And then she walks over to her desk with her paper in hand, and that's literally the end of these five minutes. I was going to say not a lot happens in these five minutes, but you do get a wonderful death in these five minutes, which kind of elevates it above a lot of the five minutes some of my guests thus far have had to sit through Gary Hill. So the question, and I think this is like academic, uh, do you have a favourite scene segment, line of dialogue uh, from these five minutes? Oh, it's it's the the, the, sal- it's the, the fucking Salvation Army line thing. <laughs> it just really cements that, that this little girl is a piece of shit. Because <laughs> like, I forgot this happens. So I was like Ear to ear smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted. I, I just wanted like a, a a picture, like like a, a end scene there, like, like a Mentos commercial, mm-hmm. to where like my shaking mom sees Santa Claus and her kid laying there, and she just gives him a thumbs up, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Santa. You know. <laughs> Oh man, a, a, a wide, a wide face grin and a kind of cheeky wink and a salute like the end of uh, People Under the Stairs. <laughs> Where you're like, that's a cannibal mutant that's just walking on the streets there. Awesome. <laughs> Some kids just need to be electrocuted, and that that kid, man, she she, she had to go, and and it it pays off in dividends, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm with you. This is like to me one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Right, overall. Like this is like this movie. Whether I I I love everything it does, or I dislike certain aspects, but it introduces me to a character that I want to die almost immediately, and then does not make me wait, and it will always get thumbs up from me because of that. Like you give me that, and that's I'm I'm a happy camper. I'm a happy happy camper. Um, Gary, you're a busy guy. You do podcasts. Where can people check out your stuff, buddy? Uh, on occasion, I do stuff. I haven't put anything out in a while, and that's um, you know, sickness and you know other crap going on. Mm. Um, but look for anything you could find uh, that, uh, that's mine on the Butcher Shop feed. That's a uh, Cinebeef podcast. We've been doing it forever and ever. Uh, just, uh, just about as long as uh, you've been doing this. It's a much slower process. Um, last call, Torchies. Myself, Lee Russell, and Cameron Scott uh, discuss Walter Hill films on there, and then. 
uh, stuff coming back, stuff in the pipeline that, that, that in the new year I have more confidence to to get stuff out and get the backlog out and you know I have like five or six reviews that need to be put out and I will, I will get the motivation when my my job isn't burning a hole in my brain mm-hmm. <laughs> un- unfortunately uh, to get that done or go find one of those unpaid interns It'd be wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome stuff. Ladies and gents, we are giving you an episode of Podcast Under Stairs every single day this month from the 1st to the 24th before we close the doors. And I know for a fact there's another episode dropping tomorrow. So, you take care. You uh, try and resist the urge to electrocute a child who's been really bratty. And I'll speak to you next time.